Welcome back my friends. In this one, we're going to build a beautiful cabinet with a textured front. Stick around and I hope you guys enjoy. This build will be mostly constructed of black walnut. I went ahead and pre-cut all these pieces to rough size the day earlier. Now we just need to get them all milled up and glued into panels. I let the panels cure in the clamps for a couple hours to ensure we could get them all glued together in one day, but we didn't start actually processing them until the following day. And while those rest, we'll get started on the doors. The doors are actually going to be pretty large, which will kind of run into a design issue later on, but let's get them glued. All the panels have now sat overnight and are nice and cured, so we're going to start running them through the drum sander to get them nice and clean so we can start getting this thing assembled. At this point it just looks like a bunch of panels, so I'm going to start organizing them and labeling them so I know which pieces go where, because the last thing you want to do with this expensive walnut is make the wrong cut and just waste a bunch of money. And now that I know where all the pieces are going to go, I'm going to cut them down all to their desired measurements and then give them a nice quick sanding just to ensure they're all even and smooth. Then I just went ahead and sanded these with 120 just to remove any drum sander marks because once the box is assembled it's going to be a little difficult. If you own a track saw I highly recommend getting some of these foam sheets. You can get them from your big box store. I've had the same bundle of them forever and they're relatively cheap. You'll see exactly what they're for shortly. Now we just need to get all of our pieces to their final lengths. And then while I'm doing that, I will go ahead and start cutting the shelves for the inside of the cabinet. These will be constructed of cherry, just because I have a lot of cherry and it's a lot cheaper than walnut. And right now I'm working on constructing the box. I didn't really need to miter these corners because once it's all assembled, you're not really going to see the edges anyways, but I just went the extra mile and just glued them up and mitered the corners. And the key to a good box is all your pieces are the same size and that your angles are exactly right, which is what I'm checking here. And then we're just going to add three dominoes in here just to make everything line up a little easier and just strengthen that miter. I always like to add some blue painter's tape to the seams just to help with that squeeze out on the inside of the cabinet. You just let the glue harden up a little bit and then pull the tape off and it removes it quite easy. And then we're just using Type Bond 3 here as the adhesive and we'll be mostly relying on the ratchet style clamps to apply pressure to the seams. I just started using these last year and they're actually super easy to use and they apply pressure pretty well. Then I'll just add a few extra clamps just to make sure the seams line up correctly and that the box is square. And this is what it looked like all finished, or clamped. We just let this sit overnight, didn't want to stress any of the joints, and then we just removed all the clamps and just checked it for square. Not like it really matters because it wouldn't be able to fix it anyway. I already pre-sanded all these panels, so I'm just going to clean up all the squeeze out here just to ensure it's nice and clean. And then we'll move on to the next step. And then we tried to jazz this thing up with the floating top just so it wasn't just a big bulky box. So I just used these cherry scraps that we're going to wrap in this brass material I got on Amazon. And then the pieces were a little too small for dominoes so I just used a dowel jig and just threw a couple small dowels in there. I was going to epoxy these on, but once they're kind of pressed in and assembled to the actual base, they're not really going to go anywhere, so I just went ahead and used super glue, just because it was way faster and easier to manage than the epoxy that would take forever to cure. Then after I kind of blended it and shined it up a little bit, I just ran it through the drum sander a few times to ensure that it was all the same thickness. And then to finish it off, I just used a clear coat. I did about two coats just to hopefully prevent it from tarnishing and just staying a little more shiny longer. 
And this is where the floating aspect will start making sense. This is just the top where the piece will get wedged between there, which is the copper part. Since these are thin strips of wood, they did have some flex to them, so I just ran a straight line here just to give me a reference point for when I attach it so it's not bowed or anything. And then I just drilled the holes through here, just essentially pilot holes so I ensured everything would line up straight and where I wanted it. And then I just used screws to attach it. It was just the easiest way I could think of. I was going to use threaded inserts, but it just kind of seemed like overkill as there's not really going to be any weight lifting up on it or anything like that. And then we just needed to figure out a way to close off the back so it wasn't just all open and weird looking. And then we can actually finish off the piece. So I just kind of used a combination of Craig screws and dominoes. And then we'll make some panels later to close off the piece. Now we're going to cut these doors to rough size just to get them close, leaving like an eighth inch overhang all the way around until we get further along into the process. And now to the cool part of the video. We're gonna add some texture to this panel here. I'm just drawing this rough circle just to ensure I stay on course when I throw this thing on the CNC. Then luckily we threw this spindle on the CNC because now I can use half inch collets and we're gonna use this monster one inch cove bit to add this texture. We were going to attempt to do this by hand, but by the time I added up the tools I would need to actually make it happen, it just ended up being a couple hundred dollars and it's just not really a route I wanted to go down and learn how to do all this, so we just cheated and used the CNC. I created this file in Vetric, and this file will be available for purchase if you'd like to do a similar texture. Links to all that will be in the description along with tools we used in the video. I believe this ended up taking about 30 to 40 minutes to do the texture and cut out the circle. Who knows how long this would have taken me by hand, and I have zero power carving experience so it probably would have looked awful. And then I just use this oscillating tool to cut the tabs. This thing is great for zipping off tabs. And then this textured front piece will also act as the, like the door poles. So I'm gonna add a big chamfer on the backside so that gives you a place for your hand to hold or like grab onto. And I was super happy with how it turned out. A nice even texture. And this was probably one of the most stressful parts, just cut in half. I already put a bunch of time into this thing and I didn't want to just ruin it with one wrong cut, but everything worked out great. And now to kind of figure out the placement and how we're going to attach this thing to the drawer fronts. And I thought this was going to go a lot smoother than it did. It didn't, it didn't go bad, but the first glue up was a little shady. But we just used these small dominoes just for alignment to ensure that everything lined up smooth and even. And then I was just going to rely on the glue for strength to kind of pull everything together. I've done a lot of stressful glues at this point, and one thing I've learned is always have a plan B and C, just because you never know how it's going to go. And this was one of those situations where I just couldn't get the right pressure in the right place, so I had last worst case scenario I had to add a screw back here just to kind of suck that far end in. And then I clamped it and it ended up working out. On the second one, Evie was there to help and we just kind of kind of used everything I learned from the first one and then everything went together pretty smoothly. I did add screws, but I pre-drilled them this time and I essentially just added the screws just because I added one to the other side and then just locked her all in place with these deep throat clamps. And then while that dries, we're gonna move on to the back panels. Jess said I couldn't use MDF on this one because it really takes from the piece, so I'll use the next best thing, red oak. So I had some red oak laying around and I just re it into a quarter inch panel and then we just glued it together and then I just ran that through the drum sander and bada bing bada boom. 
had a couple panels. And then right about here is kind of when I realized I had a problem with outer design. These doors were already quite heavy, the cabinet was kind of narrow, and then I was going to glue two big chunks of walnut to the front of it. So just out of concern of the cabinet being tippy, we just decided to go with a French cleat, not add feet, and just hang this thing on the wall. A French cleat is super simple, I'm just cutting this board in half right here, and we have a French cleat. And then after redesigning the back a little bit, we're just gonna add the French cleat with some Craig screws and easy as that. I just added the divider back in there and accounted for the gap for the cleat to slide in place. And then I just chopped down my panels a little bit and we were back on track. Lesson learned, you learn a lot when designing furniture from scratch. It's just, you don't think of everything. Then to inset the panel, we're just gonna use this rabbit bit and run and run it around the edge. It has a little bearing on it, so it's quite easy. And then we're just gonna follow it up with a chisel to clean out them corners as it does leave a rounded corner. And then these panels will get dyed later just so they're not that red oak color that kind of clashes with the walnut. Just using some leftover Rubio to give these a little darker finish. And then we're just going to add adjustable shelf pins to this since we don't exactly know what's all going to go in here yet. And I should have done this before I added the back panels, but we didn't, and here we are. And I actually think the cherry shelves will give it a nice contrast once everything's finished. To mount the doors, we're going to use these European style hinges. These are from Blum or Bloom, and they're expensive, but these are great. They have a ton of adjustments you can pretty much adjust the door any way you want, up, down, in and out, It's they're quite great. We mounted the doors and then we kind of adjusted them the best we can. I didn't want to really fully adjust them until it got into its like final resting place since the cabinet did have a little bit of flex to it, so it was hard to get an accurate representation of how it was going to be when it was on the wall. And the finish of choice on this one was Rubio Pier. It just looks really good on the walnut. I probably should have done two coats on this one as it did look a little dry after we finished it, but I can always do that later down the road. And this is a super easy finish to use. You pretty much just wipe it on and wipe it off. It's pretty easy to apply. And then I don't even remember what color we put on these back panels. It was essentially just some random Rubio we had in our cabinet that was dark just to use it up. Once it's full of the shelves and the shoes and everything else, you'll never even see them anyway. And that brass really pops with that dark finished walnut next to it. It's a lot brighter than it was before with the more gray unfinished walnut. And now let's install this thing. And this is how a French cleat works. You put this other half of the board on the wall and then you just lift it on and it kind of locks into place. I didn't add any extra fasteners. You could just kind of put some screws through the back of this to really secure it in, but I had no worries or concerns. It's plenty strong and the cabinet was not that heavy. This was a pretty fun build, guys, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's, it's always a challenge to try to make a box or a cabinet look fancy, and I think the floating shelf and the textured fronts really helped. This was a build for the builders challenge on Instagram. Check that out if you're interested. By Maker Central, you can win some awesome prizes. We're on the hype team for all that, so if you want to if you want to learn more on how to get in on the next season, just go to Maker Central on Instagram, or you can just reach out to us and I can send you the link to their profile. Let us know what you guys think down in the bottom in the comments. I'll have links down to everything we used along with the texture pattern for if you have a CNC, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.